Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I wanna show you how to get RetroArch up and running on your Windows PC. This will also work with Mac or Linux, but in this tutorial, I'm using a Windows 10 machine. So it's really easy to do. I was going through some of my older videos and I noticed I've shown you guys how to set this up on Android, but I've never done a Windows tutorial. First thing we're gonna to need to do is download RetroArch. We're gonna come over to the website. All links will be in the description, except for ROMs. There's an installer and there's a download. I usually use the download. This will make it portable. I can put it in any directory I want to. Since I'm using a 64-bit operating system, I'm gonna download the 64-bit version. Next, we'll need 7-zip or WinRAR. Now you can go ahead and download this 64-bit version. Really easy to install, it's only one meg. I already have mine downloaded. They are in my downloads folder. First thing we're gonna do is install 7-Zip. If you already have WinRAR, you won't need this, but I'm just gonna install it real quick. Close, now we need to extract RetroArch. Right click, 7-Zip, extract to RetroArch. Now while that's extracting, you'll also need some games. I have mine on a separate hard drive in a folder called ROMs. In this video, I'm just gonna import some NES, some N64, some Sega Genesis, and some SNES games. Now I can't tell you where to get these, but if you do a quick Google search, you can find everything you need. So let's say you want Super Nintendo games. Just search Super Nintendo ROM set on Google and you can come across something. Inside of each one of these, all of my games are zipped. Now RetroArch supports way too many emulators, but I wanted to go over some basic ones that a lot of people love to play. These are easy to set up. All right, so now that we have RetroArch extracted, we need to go ahead and start it. Go back to my downloads, RetroArch. We'll scroll down until we find the application, not the debug, but the exe here. You can make a shortcut if you'd like to. I'm just gonna start it from this directory. Double click. It's gonna launch in windowed mode. I'm using an Xbox One controller. Now RetroArch is compatible with Tons of different controllers. You can use a PS3, PS4, pretty much any wired controller will work. We wanna make this full screen. We're gonna to go to video, scroll down, start in full screen mode. It's gonna go full screen on us. Now, just for this video, I'm gonna show you guys user interface, appearance. We can change the menu icon theme. It's set to monochrome. There's a few in here. I'm gonna go with monochrome, and I'm also going to change the menu shader pipeline. Ribbon simplified, ribbon, simple snow, snow, bokeh, snowflake, and off. I'm gonna leave mine off. We're gonna back up. First thing I recommend doing is going to input. Menu toggle gamepad combo. We wanna set this to whatever you'd like, but I set mine to L3 and R3. When I push down on my analog sticks, it'll bring me out of the game back into this menu. So the most important thing with RetroArch are cores. Cores are the emulators. We need to be connected online to download the cores. From the main menu, we're gonna scroll down to online updater. First thing I always do is update core info files. It's gonna extract, finish that for us. Update databases. Now you can go through and update everything if you'd like to. So for this tutorial, we're just gonna do those two. The next thing we need to do is download our emulators or cores. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna be using NES, SNES, N64, and Sega Genesis. We'll go to core updater. We're gonna scroll down until we find an NES emulator. There are a lot in here. So if you wanna emulate the Atari Lynx, you can download Beetle Handy. I'm just gonna be going with NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, and Nintendo 64. So we're gonna come across the NES cores. There are a lot here. The NES is really good. If you're just starting out, try Quick NES. It's not as accurate as the others, but it works great. We're gonna download this one. It's gonna extract it. That core is now installed. Next, N64. As of making this video, there are two, Moop N64 Plus and Parallel N64. I prefer using Moop N64 Plus. 
Some games will not work with this core. You will have to use the parallel core. But like I mentioned, if you're just starting out, follow along here. Moopin 64 Plus works great. Now that core is installed. Next up, SNES. Lots in here to choose from. My favorite is Hygen Accuracy, but it does take a beefy CPU to run this. I have tried this on lower end hardware and it doesn't work very well unless you have, I'd say three to 3.5 gigahertz CPU. My next choice for SNES is SNES 9X. Been around for a long time. It's not as accurate, but it works great. And finally, we need Sega Genesis. Genesis Plus GX or Pico Drive. I like Plus GX here. The MS stands for Master System. GG stands for Game Gear. MD stands for Mega Drive, which was the Genesis in the United States. And CD is for Sega CD. So to emulate all of those systems with this one core, we're going to download it. And we're done with the cores for now. There are a lot in here, so if you want to experiment, you definitely can. We're going to back all the way out. It's time to import our games. We're going to scroll all the way to the end here. Scan directory. From here, we need to find our ROMs. Mine are on my F drive in a folder called ROMs. I don't suggest scanning them all at one time. You want to go into each folder, so NES. I'm going to scan this directory. If you look at the bottom, it's scanning all of my games. It could take a little while if you have a ton of games like I do. We're going to back up N64, scan this directory. Same thing with the rest. Sega Genesis, scan this directory. SNES, scan this directory. Now this could take a little while, so I will fast forward this. I have a lot of games to import. My directories are finished scanning. I have some N64 games, some NES, SNES, Sega Genesis. If we scroll through here, we don't have any box art or screenshots. We can change that very easily. We're gonna go all the way back over to main menu, online updater, thumbnails updater, and we can find what system we wanna download box art for. I'm just gonna do it for one here because it does take a little while. I'm gonna go with Nintendo 64. Let that download. It's going to extract. Sometimes the servers are working great like right now. It's downloading pretty fast. Sometimes it's really slow to download. It's finished downloading and extracting. We're going to move back over to N64 and we now have box art. RetroArch automatically saves your configurations but sometimes it doesn't. So when I make a big change, I always go to configurations, save current configuration. I'm gonna back up, I'm gonna quit RetroArch, and I'm just gonna restart it. So now we can actually start playing games if we'd like to. I'm just gonna go with Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis, whatever you wanna call it, find a game I'd like to play, Always go with Altered Beast, one of the best games ever made. Run. We want to use this core, Genesis Plus GX. If you downloaded another core, you can choose that. Run. It's going to start the game for us. Now I do have my FPS listed in the top left hand corner. That is my NVIDIA FPS. You can also enable the RetroArch FPS counter if you'd like. So I'm not even going to play this. I'm going to press in my L3 and R3 because I set my menu toggle gamepad combo to those buttons. It's going to bring us back in. In each of these emulators, there are options. Not all options are available in each emulator, but there are a few. Some of these you can upscale. You can overclock the CPU. There's a bunch of different settings and you kind of just need to mess around with it. There's also tons of information on RetroArch online. Do a quick search and you'll find everything you need to know. I'm going to back up. 
if we want to close this game, we'll just go to close content and we'll back up. So now we can start another game if we'd like to. I'm going to go with GoldenEye 007. Run, Moopin64 Plus, run. Now straight out of the box, it is set to a very low resolution, but we can upscale this game to make it look really beautiful. I'm going to get in here. I'm also going to show you how to save your games. So I believe this is pretty much the stock resolution of the original N64, but we want to go a little higher. We want to make this game look a little better. I'm going to use my menu toggle gamepad combo. I'm going to save the state. That's going to save my game. 100% save. I'm going to back up. Go to options. I'm in 4x3 aspect ratio right now. So this 4x3 resolution can be changed. And I'm just going to bring it up. We also have texture filtering. Now there's a lot of options in here. I don't mess around with these too much, but you can experiment with them. Texture enhancement is another really good one. As is, X2, X2 SAI, HQ2X, HQ2XS. My favorite is X2. Now in order for this resolution and the texture enhancements to take effect, we'll have to close the content. We'll have to run the game again. I can load it back up by pressing my L3 and R3, load, and now it looks beautiful. It just, it makes it a totally different game going up. Now some systems might not be able to handle this high resolution. I was getting a dip down to, I think it went down to 58, 59, still playable, but it just makes the games look a lot better. Now, not every emulator has that option. We're going to close this content and back up. So that's pretty much it. This was just a basic how to get RetroArch up and running. This is a quick method. There are a load of settings inside of RetroArch that you can experiment with. You can add scan lines. You can add smoothing. If you're interested in seeing a video on more advanced settings, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to do a video on that. I didn't want to make this an hour long video, so I could break it up into parts, but there's a lot that goes on with RetroArch and it's constantly updated. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I hope this helped out a little bit. And like I mentioned, if you're interested in seeing more advanced settings and techniques, let me know in the comments. Like always, thanks for watching.